For Christians, Easter is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The Christian faith hinges on Christ's resurrection. Did you know that if Christ didn't rise from the dead, Christianity is pointless? But before we talk more about Christ's resurrection and why it's so crucial to the Christian faith, let's talk about the events that led up to Easter Sunday. The gospel, or the good news of Jesus Christ, is simply stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. First, Christ died. The death of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, is the center of the gospel. The Roman government executed him by one of the most cruel and excruciating form of capital punishment ever devised, crucifixion. Now, why did Jesus have to die? For our sins. Just before Jesus died, he cried out, It is finished. If you think about it, those are rather strange last words for a dying person to say. What was Jesus declaring to have finished? It seems that Jesus died for a purpose, and his last words prove that he successfully accomplished it. From the scriptures, we learn that when Jesus said those words, an awesome spiritual transaction took place. Jesus took upon himself the sin of the whole world, and God the Father laid upon God the Son all the guilt and wrath our sin deserved, and Jesus bore it in himself perfectly, totally satisfying the wrath of God in our place. So to say it simply, Jesus became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God. The Romans didn't kill Jesus. The religious leaders didn't kill Jesus. It was our sins, yours and mine, that put him on the cross. And it wasn't those long, rusty nails that held him on the cross. It was his awesome love for us that held him there. Jesus died according to his own will, as he says in John 10, 17 to 18. He died because of his love for us, a love that far exceeds any other we might have experienced. Isaiah 53, 3-5 beautifully shows this. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. After Christ died, he was buried. Why is this important? Christ was buried in the tomb of a rich man, Joseph of Arimathea, fulfilling what was prophesied in Isaiah 53, 9. Even though he was killed as a criminal, it was prophesied that he would have an honorable burial because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Even in bearing the sins of the world, Jesus himself never sinned and his honorable burial was in recognition of that. Next, Jesus rose again the third day. Jesus' resurrection proved that he was sinless. You see, Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. Our holy God determined that the wages for our sin is death. Death is something we have earned by being sinful. Jesus took our sin upon himself and died to pay the price for our sin. But even though he took all our sin upon himself, he did not become a sinner. He rose again because death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. He triumphed over death and the grave. The resurrection of Jesus is not some add-on to a more important work on the cross. If the cross is the payment for our sins, the empty tomb is the receipt, showing that the perfect Son of God made perfect payment for our sins. The payment itself is of little good without the receipt. The resurrection showed that Jesus did not succumb to the inevitable result of sin. The resurrection is proof of his conquest. At this point, we can better see why Christ's resurrection is crucial to the Christian faith. 
Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 17 to 19, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. In other words, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then death has power over him and defeated him. If death has power over Jesus, he is not God. If Jesus is not God, he cannot offer a complete sacrifice for sins. If Jesus cannot offer a complete sacrifice for sins, our sins are not completely paid for before God. If my sins are not completely paid for before God, then I am still in my sins. Therefore, if Jesus is not risen, he is unable to save. Phew, that is heavy indeed. If Jesus cannot save, there is really no hope for you and me. God is a holy God, and our sin separates us from Him, and there is absolutely nothing we can do to get to Him. I explained this in great detail in my Christmas video. I've added a link to it in the description below in case you've not had a chance to watch it already. Now, getting back to the resurrection of Jesus, how do we know for sure that Jesus rose again? There is an innumerable amount of evidence for Jesus' resurrection. A great resource is Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ. Lee Strobel, an award-winning journalist at the Chicago Tribune and former atheist, set out to disprove Christianity after his wife became a Christian. The whole book is set up like an investigation, where he examines different evidences, like eyewitness evidence, documentary and scientific evidence, psychological evidence, and so on. Strobel decided in his earnest quest to disprove Christianity that if he could only disprove the resurrection, then the whole faith would fall like a house of cards. Instead, he ended up finding compelling evidence for Christ's resurrection. He discusses the medical evidence for Christ's resurrection, the circumstantial evidence, and other forms of evidence as well in great detail. I'm not going to get into the evidence since that is outside the scope of this video, but I definitely recommend reading The Case for Christ if you would like to see the evidence for yourself. Also, if you're not a reader, The Case for Christ movie does an excellent job of highlighting the major supporting pieces of evidence, and it's a really well done film. I have linked it in the description below. I highly recommend watching it. Finally, Jesus died and rose again the third day, all according to the scriptures. Everything Jesus did was a fulfillment of prophecy. His birth, his life, his ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection were prophetically recorded in the scriptures hundreds of years earlier, and Jesus fulfilled each one literally. Jesus fulfilled 353 prophecies, and he's not done yet. For every prophecy there is pertaining to Jesus' first coming, there are around eight prophecies talking about his second coming. And since Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy pertaining to his first coming, it is safe to assume that he will also fulfill every single prophecy in the future. There is going to be one major difference though. The first time, Jesus came humbly and meekly to serve and to save. In his second coming, he will be revealed as king of all and the righteous judge of all the earth. Which brings me to why I'm making this video. Dear friend, if you're watching this, it's not by accident. I have prayed for you. I want to invite you into the hope I have in the death and resurrection of Jesus. I named this video Empty Tomb or Empty Hope because I wanted to encourage you to seriously consider your belief or your unbelief in Jesus. Please don't put it off. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I am pleading with you to take this seriously. Your soul is so precious. If today God is calling you, don't harden your heart. You see, every day, every moment is a choice. We choose what to wear, what to eat for dinner, who to hang out with, how to spend our time. The very fact that you are watching this video is because of a choice you have made. 
We also make many decisions in our lives that have greater consequences, like where we're going to school, who we're going to marry, how many kids we're going to have, what career we're going to pursue, etc. But this decision far outweighs them all in significance because your eternal life depends on it. This message has been weighing heavily on my heart for a few weeks. If Jesus really rose from the dead, then his claim of being God is true. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I can only urge you and be your cheerleader to find the truth for yourself, but I can't do it for you. Your eternal life is at stake and nothing, no accolades, no career, nothing is worth more than your life. The good news is that Jesus still saves. Wherever you're at, God can reach you and rescue you. If you do not accept Jesus as your Savior, you will meet him one day as your judge. So I am pleading with you to please, please, please consider Jesus. If you have already put your trust in Jesus, I want to encourage you to watch and wait for him. Hebrews 12.2 says, For the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. What is that joy? It is joy in redeeming his people. And when the people Jesus redeemed in turn go and share the good news with others, and they put their faith in the Lord. What are we doing to ensure that our Lord gets his reward for his suffering? Remember the verse which says, Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin? It's not just about what we don't do. It's also about what we do. As William Thom said, Be careful how you live. You will be the only Bible some people ever read. A life yielded in simple obedience to God can impact the lives of countless people in ways you might only understand in heaven. It was through Jesus' simple obedience to his heavenly Father that countless lives have been, are being, and will be saved. Are we living in the light of his humble example? To the person who feels ashamed now to speak of your faith with your friends, are you prepared to also feel ashamed when your friends, being judged before the judgment seat, turn and ask you, Why didn't you tell us anything? If you knew our souls were in such great danger, why didn't you warn us? Didn't you care about us? To the person running away from God's revealed purpose for your life, there will come a day when you won't be able to run away anymore. There will come a day when you will have to face the reality of the consequences springing from your activity and your inactivity here on earth. Are you ready? To the person neglecting God's call to pray for the souls around you because you think prayer is only a trivial matter. Prayer is not a trivial matter. It is war. The fight on your knees is one the enemy does not want you to fight because it's then souls are won and he loses. And so he is most successful when he deceives you into thinking your prayers don't matter. If you refuse to pray because you believe it'll do no good, know that you are waving the white flag and giving Satan an easy win. The precious lives of so many hinge on your obedience and bowing the knee. You don't lose anything by praying, but you lose a great many things by not. To sum it all up, Jesus died for us. Jesus rose again. The tomb is empty. The Christian's hope is not. My prayer for us all is that our love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that we may approve the things that are excellent, that we may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God.